So let's do it. Hi friends, happy coronavirus time. I know happy is not the right word for it, but that's the attitude I'm choosing to have because literally everything is crazy. I am not traveling, I'm not speaking right now. I'm just kind of diving into this forced vacation. And what I'm doing is I am officially starting a YouTube channel. This has been something that I've been wanting to do for a while. People have been asking me to do, but I've been like, I'm so busy. But guess what? Not busy now. Not busy now. Literally have nothing else to do besides start this YouTube video. So to introduce myself, my name is Maggie Craig. I'm a Catholic speaker. That means my job, like people pay me, not a lot, but they do, to travel and talk to people about Jesus. I speak to anyone who will listen, even those who won't. I'm looking at you, confirmation kids. All different topics, reconciliation, and about adoration, and how to form a personal relationship with Jesus, and a life of prayer, and all these different things. And something that I like to do in my travel, I really like to have a question and answer session at the end of my talk, at the end of my retreat. Questions are so important, so many, literally so many people were raised with this false idea that asking questions about the faith is a bad thing. That you should just, just close your eyes and walk blindly through life and, and don't ask questions about God or faith or religion. That's like truly unbiblical. Jesus says in the scriptures, he says, seek and you'll find, knock and the door shall be open to you. Jesus is known as, as the great teacher. Jesus wants to answer our question. I love having question and answer sessions, not because I am Jesus, but because I am speaking his message and sharing his truth and his love. Q and A sessions, people will take pieces of paper and pens and they'll write down any questions that they have for me about my faith, about my life, about my talk, whatever. And I have saved literally all of them. There are a whole lot of questions in here. I have questions from people in Alaska and Michigan and Florida and Texas and all over. So I've saved them all so I could one day start a YouTube channel. And that day is today. Question number one. How many Fortnite wins do you have? Pretty sure a middle school boy asked me that question. Hate to break your heart. I don't play Fortnite. <laughs> Would aliens with a rational soul need to be baptized? What a question! I love talking about aliens. Do they exist? Are they human forms? Are there organisms on other planets? Would Jesus have appeared to aliens in the same way he appeared to us 2,000 years ago in the Middle East? The church hasn't come up with an official statement about aliens. Basically, we don't know. I don't know. We don't know. We belong to the God of the universe. So take that however you want it. This is great. What is the difference between happiness and joy? I would tend to think that happiness is a more like temporary fleeting thing based on your circumstance. Joy is a lot more eternal based on recognition that there is God and God loves you and that no matter what's going on in your life, no matter your circumstances, no matter your feelings, that you are loved and you are taken care of. I don't think happiness is a bad thing. Happiness is great. Joy is definitely something we want to go for more. What brings you joy? Oh, going off of my definition earlier that happiness is more temporary and joy is more eternal based on decision. Um, God, God brings me joy. A life of Christ, a life with the community of the church. I especially receive joy through the community of the church, through praising God with my friends, through praying rosary, praying through the scriptures with friends in the community. So I receive joy whenever I am participating in the life of Christ with other people. Hmm. Did you have doubts about God when you were our age? Absolutely. I totally have doubts. I've had doubts when I was younger, when I was your age, whoever you were who asked this question. I've had doubts now. And, and that's okay. I don't think doubts are a bad thing. They're not something to be afraid of. And God isn't mad at you for having doubts at all. Oh my gosh, look at the apostles. They had doubts all the time, uh, but Jesus was still present and still there and still loved them and help them find truth even in the midst of their doubts. The more I journey towards Christ and the more I journey towards his truth, the more my doubts maybe don't necessarily go away, but seem so much smaller in comparison to the truth of God. So if you have doubts about anything, not a bad thing. Find answers though. What is your favorite book in the Bible? The Bible is known as a book, but it's not just one book. The Bible has so many different authors, so many different books, so many different genres, so many different 
styles of writing. My favorite book, my favorite portion of the Bible, I would say, are the book of Psalms. The word psalm was translated to the word song. And the psalms are the part of the mass that's typically sung in between the first reading and the second reading. So basically the book of Psalms are 150 songs, like all song lyrics being super emotional and vulnerable and like pouring out the heart of whoever was writing them. For those who don't believe in Jesus existing, what historical proof is there to show that Jesus lived? No serious scholar debates the existence of Jesus. Even Richard Dawkins, a head atheist, acknowledges that Jesus did live historically. Jesus is a true, real historical figure. He's been attested to not just in scriptures, but through other historical accounts. Specifically, Josephus was a, a Roman historian at the time of Jesus who recorded Jesus' life and his existence. There are other records of Jesus. That's why, like, like I just said, all serious scholars, even those who are atheists, recognize that Jesus was a true, real historical figure. Ooh, this is great. This person also has really good handwriting. If the mass is heaven on earth, and we participate in the Mass, can we say that we've, quote, been to heaven? Absolutely. The Mass is described as heaven kissing earth, and the Mass is a foreshadowing of what is to come. So I think absolutely Mass is a, is a foretaste of heaven. I don't think heaven is necessarily a physical place. So when we participate in the Mass, when we participate in the sacraments, we get to participate in the divine embrace when heaven kisses earth. This is why the Mass is so important. I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I go to church, I go to adoration and Bible study, I do my best to pray daily, but I still feel so far from God. What am I doing wrong? I would encourage you to change your focus. Not what am I doing wrong, but what can I do better? Because Christianity is all about growing, continuing to grow and to do better and to get closer and closer to the truth. Um, let me give you a map analogy. This is the only math analogy I will ever give you. If you have a standard graphing calculator, there will be like a parabola and a dot. And if you press a button on the calculator, you can move the dot closer and closer to the parabola. And at one point on the screen, it'll look like the dot is on the parabola. But then if you press another button on the graphing calculator, you zoom in. And then on the next screen, when you zoomed in, you realize actually the dot and the parabola are really far apart. I think as you grow in the Christian life, this is what our faith looks like. We're always journeying closer and closer towards God. And on the outside, to other people, you are, you're a saint, you're doing great with God. You go to adoration and you go to church. On the outside world, people might think that you, you as the dot are on the parabola of God, but you know personally that you still have so much more to go. And that's okay, you will always have more to grow. First thing I would recommend you do is to go to the sacrament of reconciliation. The best way I like to see my faith is I like to see my religion as a relationship. The word religion and relationship actually share a lot of the same root words. Another definition for the word religion is to bind yourself to another person through a relationship. I like to see my faith as a relationship, and sin is a rejection of that relationship, taking steps away from the relationship. So, so it, sin is separation, it's distance. And all of us sin. I grew up, I used to think that sin was just like for serial killers or drug dealers. And God bless those people. But St. Paul teaches us that literally all of us sin. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So sin is a rejection from God, a separation from God. Even if you know God, even if you love Him, if you're separated, we won't be able to hear Him. I'll give you an example. Let's imagine uh, for a second that my mom, who lives in Denver, I'm in California, is in my driveway. Let's just imagine my mom is in my driveway and I know everything about my mom. I've, I've lived with her for years. I know the outfit she's wearing. I know how she styled her hair. I know the shoes she's wearing. I know everything about my mom. But if she's in the parking lot, if she's in my driveway, and I'm here in my house, we're separated by distance. Even if I know everything about my mom, if my mom starts talking to me, I'm not gonna hear her because we're separated by distance. Same with us and God, you can have the best catechesis and go to Bible study and know everything about God, but if you are separated from God through sin in your heart, you're going to be at a distance. You're going to be separated from Him and you're not going to hear Him. The good news is we believe in grace. We believe in mercy. The sacrament of reconciliation literally means bring back together again. And if religion is about relationship, reconciliation is not about what you did wrong, how terrible you were. Reconciliation is you and God being brought back together again.
So if you feel like you, you're not hearing God in your life, but you're doing all the right things, go to the sacrament of reconciliation. Not just once, not just twice a year, but we want to make it a regular habit. The church encourages us to receive the sacrament of reconciliation once a month, if not more. How important is God? <laughs> I would say very important. There have been seasons, times in life where people haven't recognized the value of exercise or the value of sleep or the value of drinking water. Just because large groups of people don't acknowledge something's important doesn't mean it's not important. Just because a lot of people don't recognize God to be important or religion to be important does not mean that it's not the case. Something that has really helped me when I was in high school is someone said to me about Christianity, it's either real or it's not. If it's not real, what are you doing? Why are you participating in it? Live your own life, make your own rules, do your own thing. But if it is real, it's the most important thing. And if we were to go through life without asking these eternal questions about religion, that would be a life not well lived. So I would say God is muy importante. Anyway, thanks for these questions. Thanks for watching. I'm going to keep going through these questions. I'm going to keep um, praying with you and, and sharing my faith with you. And I hope you follow along. Thanks.